Good morning, everyone. On behalf of AdTech India and LinkedIn Marketing Solutions, a very warm welcome to Pandemic Pivots, which is a three-part web series focused on bringing to you stories of leading marketeers and how they transformed the 2020 marketing plan. In our first episode, we spoke with Upgrad and uh, Nokri, and we focused on agility and empathy being the key to effective marketing response. We then spoke to hardcore technology brands, uh, Microsoft and Freshworks in the second episode, who shared the importance of adopting a customized approach to respond to customer sentiments effectively. We've had a great audience in you in these last two episodes, and the interaction and engagement has been phenomenal. I'm glad that these conversations have been of value both for you and for your business. Today for the third and final episode, we have two leading essential service brands who will talk about their customer first approach during these unexpected times. Now, before I hand it over to today's moderator, who will introduce you to our speakers, we have some housekeeping rules. You can use the Q&A and the comment section that you see to stay connected with us during the webinar. Please keep your thoughts and questions flowing and we will make sure that most of them are answered by our speakers. In case you wish to address your, quest, uh, address your question to a particular speaker, please mention their name with the question. We will share a short feedback form with you at the end of the webinar. Do share your thoughts there with us. And we will also be sharing the recording of this webinar and our previous episodes on the AdTech India LinkedIn page. So follow us there and keep yourself updated. And to get the ball rolling now, I want to introduce to you our session moderator for the day, Nikita Arora. With over a decade of experience in integrated marketing communications, uh, Nikita has worked across activation, events, media, and creative agencies. She currently leads the enterprise marketing for LinkedIn's advertising solutions in India and is responsible for building and nurturing relationships with key customer stakeholders through digital content and field initiatives. An evangelist for LinkedIn from before she joined the company, Nikita has been on their prestigious power profile employee list for 2017 and 2018, as well as the employee spotlight for 2019. Welcome Nikita. Thanks, Good Shiny, for the warm you. introduction. Uh, LMS2 is very excited to partner with the AdTech tech team for this unique series, a uh, series which is very close to my heart, given that it is one of my personal pivots as a marketer. But that is not the story that we're here for today. Today, we have with us two senior marketers from leading brands in the Indian banking and telecom sectors, ICICI Bank and Airtel. And they'll take us through the reimagined marketing approach as they navigated the countrywide lockdown and the pandemic. So it is my pleasure to welcome Sujit Ganguly, who leads brand and corporate communications for ICICI Bank in India. He's currently responsible for ICICI Bank's brand, digital advertising, media, market research, social media, and corporate communications portfolio. Prior to this, Sujit worked at ICICI Prudential Life Insurance, where he handled multiple responsibilities across sales, marketing, and service functions. Welcome, Sujit, and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. Can I request you to please um, switch on your video? Hi, can you hear me? Hi, Nikita. Hi, Sujit, we can hear you, but we cannot see you yet. So if you can switch on your camera while I introduce our next speaker. Oh, great, we can yeah. see you now. Welcome, Sujit. Thanks, Nikita, thanks, Shiny. Thanks for the invite and thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to a very stimulating discussion with everybody. Thank you. Same here. Our second speaker for today is Shashwat Sharma, Chief Marketing Officer at Airtel. Shashwat joined Bharti Airtel in 2018 as their Chief Brand Officer and was elevated to the CMO position in 2019. He's been at the helm of the Airtel Thanks Exclusive Rewards Program, building differentiation in Airtel product catalogs across mobility, broadband, and digital services. In fact, just yesterday, Airtel announced their partnership with Verizon and the launch of Airtel Blue Jeans. Exciting times. Uh, before Airtel, he spent 13 plus years with Hindustan Unilever in varied roles, handling brands like Dove, Lakme, Close Up, and Pepsodent. 
He's also led the launch of HUL's Ayurvedic brand, Lever Ayush. Welcome to Pandemic Pivots, Shashwat. May I request you to please switch on your video as well? Thank you, Nagira. Thank you. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm really looking forward to the session ahead. Great. So now before we move on to your respective marketing pivot stories, I just thought we'll start with a quick icebreaker question um, and try and know you both a little better about what you like, what you dislike. Yeah. So I'd love to know from you both, what has been the most compelling campaign that you have come across during this pandemic? And while I'll give you a few seconds to think about it, I would also love for our audience on both Zoom and LinkedIn to add their personal favorite campaigns in the chat window. So at the bottom of your Zoom screen, you can add it in the comments section, in the chat section, and share it with us. LinkedIn people, please uh, feel free to share in a comment. And you can share a global campaign or an Indian campaign, anything that possibly caught your attention. So Sujit, how about you? Did anything exciting that you've come across? So you see, I'm a soccer fan. So my first example will be from soccer, but sports marketing is really big these days. So for two, three months across the globe, all sports were stopped. And then around middle of June, all the leagues in Europe came back to life. Uh, so the players were playing, they were playing to the West, but the crowd support was missing. And that's a big part of any sport. Uh, what one of the leading German clubs did is that they asked all their fans and these clubs have their own set of registered fans. They reached out to them. And they said that we are missing you guys. You're also missing us. So why don't you take prints of your own pic of your own body, of your own face and send it to us and we'll paste it on the stands. So that when the players are playing and when the audience is watching on television, it looks like the stadium is full. So I thought it's a very innovative way to be able to recreate, almost recreate the old atmosphere and get the excitement back. That's one. Uh, in another quick 20, 30 seconds, I'll give you some other small examples. And I think these are examples of smart work done by marketeers across the globe. Uh, BBC is an iconic brand. A lot of us have grown up watching BBC news. They have all their newsrooms, which are followed by various people. They said that on Zoom or on other uh, video chats, you can download those rooms and use it as a backdrop. So that if you, you know, people have different situations in, in their houses. Um, and some of them, uh, they might feel a lot about it, right? So you download the BBC stuff and use it as a background. And it's a nice, good feeling for people working from home. So that was also a great camp. Yep, absolutely. I, I feel like I'm in the LinkedIn Gurgaon office with my background as well. Yeah, first time when you did it and I spoke to you, I actually, I mean, I mistook it. I thought you were actually in the office. It's such a beautiful background you have. Yes, so it makes us feel a little bit closer as a team. Yeah. How about you, Shashwat? Anything interesting from that you've seen? And I think lots of brands did some fantastic stuff uh, throughout this period. I think there was stuff from Coke, uh, which was very, very uh, uplifting at a time when everybody was depressed. There were various other pieces. There was something from Signal about how the mask faces are lacking smiles now in the world. Uh, a lot of them caught their attention, but I would still go back to a slightly more old-fashioned, but I thought a very, very authentic piece of work uh, done by Lifepoint globally. And I think it's a brand... And for me, the reason it stood out was it was uh, it was always embedded in the brand culture. They have been for the last 12, 15 years, been on this war on uh, across humanity, across Africa, various parts of Asia, India, uh, to really try and uh, drive hand washing, hygiene, sanitation for uh, for all the uh, people, and that's become a way of life for that brand. And I think when this came up. This challenge came out, I think the relevance of the brand just went up. And I think uh, they were very authentic about the way they went about it. There are a couple of campaigns they have done on hand washing globally. And now they have uh, really taken it up. They have been working with UNICEF, etc. for a very long time. And they just accelerated all of their efforts across India and Africa uh, to really drive a very, very relevant, well-received, authentic messaging to consumers. And also, also drive business at the same time, actually. So for me, that's been the standout that work that I've seen in the last three months. Yes, absolutely. And I think, in fact, just yesterday or two days back, I read about Lifebuoy and other personal hygiene products that leave us partnership with Oyo and how they will be making sure that the Oyo hotels are sanitized and that you know the, uh, attend, the people who have come in receive hygiene kits and stuff. So like you said, it is resulting in business and it is so contextual and relevant. That's right. It's interesting how we didn't think about it before these things happened, right? It was actually a great partnership even before. 
So on that very inspiring note, let's begin the conversation that we are here for. Just a reminder for the audience, we have a dedicated 15 to 20 minutes towards the end of the session for Q&A. So if you have any questions for either of the speakers or both of the speakers, feel free to add them in, in the Q&A section on Zoom and in the comment sections on LinkedIn. We'll make sure to get to it towards the end. So Shashwat, let's hear from, it, from you first. What were some of the unique business challenges that Airtel had to overcome as telecom overnight became essential services? Can you take us through your marketing team's response and any tactics that you employed to reach out and engage with your customers? I think uh, if you were to think about uh, some of the changes were universal. So we had to figure out ways of working remotely. We had to really businesses were disrupted. A lot of our offline systems and businesses, retail spaces were uh, non-functional and it, was, it all happened overnight. I think there was the initial part was really about uh, business continuity in many ways, which is really about how do we just keep ensuring everything is up and running. Uh, and I think that was the first one or two days, the first couple of weeks, I think I would say, uh, was where we were really pivoting on uh, business continuity a lot more. But I think as uh, then we came to a point where there was a lot of debate on the marketing side in terms of saying, should we do something or should we not? And I think uh, at that point, uh, we, we went through a phase where we really looked at our response as saying, as a brand, should we just go out there, talk about uh, the, what it would do in such a scenario. But I think we took a call at that point of time saying, you know what, this situation and this problem is way bigger than the brand and the service that we are really offering at this point in time. And we decided to keep quiet in the initial response. We said we'll not do anything in terms of going ATL, in, in, in terms of trying to position our brand in the middle of all of this, because this is, this is too large. Uh, what we then started doing was really about pivoting towards saying, actually, you know what, we need much tighter consumer connect at this point of time. We can't get disconnected from our consumers. And a lot of technology had to therefore be edited where we started creating direct virtual connect with consumers. There was a consumer hour where like literally a full webinar with a few consumers joining in. We started doing some retailer hours in terms of really understanding what's happening in small towns and various places where retail shops. Uh, and we started giving all our employees tools for listening to consumers calling in for complaints, our call centers, so that everyone can have a very first-hand view of what, what's really happening. And I think that was the core of our response. We can't miss uh, consumer connectedness at this point of time. And, uh, and then we came to a phase, and I would say that would be week three, when we started re-strategizing, uh, which is really about saying what should be our way forward, how do we, uh, how do we really look at what we do uh, uh, going forward. And that's where we start. We actually pivoted to saying, you know what, we have to be empathetic. We have to bring service at the core of what we do. Uh, we are here to serve customers. And, and that led to a massive, uh, what we call as a relaunch of Airtel internally, uh, which some of which you have seen as part of some campaign that came in towards the end of the June, which is uh, open to questions, which I'll talk about a bit later. But I think that's how this whole journey panned out for me. Nikita. And, Interesting. I think, in fact, somebody just on the comment section has mentioned the open to question campaigns and how it is a consumer insights driven campaign and hence they're giving you a good kudos. So I think that's a very interesting question. Definitely. Uh, Sujit, what about you? Can you take us through the ICICI bank response as the pandemic began and the lockdown started in the middle of March? So it was a multi pronged response. Um, Banking has always been an essential service, right? Without money, without currency, without digital transactions, it's impossible for anybody to do anything. And the interesting part is that there are people of all types. There are people who believe in offline methods of interaction with the bank, and there are people who believe in digital. There are people across the entire spectrum. Uh, so when the first the lockdown started, the, the first thing we had to reassure people is that all our services are open. If you want to do anything, if you want to buy groceries, buy medicines, or buy anything, anything that you want to buy or transact or pay, all our channels are open. So we have to tell people our branches are open. The world is in a lockdown, but all branches are open. All ATMs are open. Uh, second was to also reassure them that we're taking all precautions. Even if you come there, uh, all precautions are being taken, like uh, people are allowed one at a time. All people are checked for temperatures. Um, ATMs are sanitized all the time, multiple times during the day. So I'm not elaborating too much on it, but one was to reassure people that our physical channels are open and they are, if you wish, uh, you can come and they are safe. 
Uh, in that line, we also started mobile ATMs in several parts of the large cities where people could, the ATM would come to the uh, society complexes, be parked outside, and people would go and withdraw cash. They really didn't have to step outside their societies. So that was one. Second was that we saw this as also a great opportunity to, you know, so you see already lots and lots of consumers in India are digitally savvy, but there is also a large number that is not. So we said that can we use this opportunity to educate people and prod them towards fund transfers, bill payments, transactions on the phone. And that I think we've had a good amount of success. So we had various campaigns talking about how easy is it to pay bills? How easy is it to do a transaction, your electricity bill, your phone recharge? All of those things could be done uh, digitally. At the same time, we also launched our uh, uh, WhatsApp banking, which has also been a big hit. Within a few weeks, we've had 1 million customers who registered and are using it to be able to do their simple service requests on WhatsApp itself. We also uh, said that uh, this is the time where not only existing customers would want digital transactions from us, but also there could be new customers, I mean, prospects, people who would want to come and for various reasons known to them, they might want to initiate a relationship with us. How do we enable that? So banking traditionally has been a case where you have to go to a branch or meet somebody physically to open a new account. Post that, you can do transactions on the phone. But we said in this period, can we enable you to start a relationship with us completely? So we were one of the first two or three banks that, able to, uh, that enabled a complete digital process with a video KYC at the end, where you could open an absolutely um, uh, full-fledged account, savings account, and then start off all your transactions. The last thing that we looked at is last but not least at all, is that uh, these are also times of emotional stress. So we have a lot of people who are our followers on, on social media. How do we uh, give them safety tips? How do we give them some, some warmth, a hug? So we talked about various things. We celebrated all the days with Gusto, the Father's Day, the Mother's Day. And I must say that the responses we got on some of these videos and posts were much higher than what we get normally, which means that there is a need for people, for brands like us to reach out and communicate warm messages to our people. We did that. And uh, so I would say that's the, that's how I would, there's a long list below, but I think it'll take a long time. So I think that is the last three or four buckets that I would place our marketing activities under. Sure. But uh, I mean, ICSA Bank is always known to be a digital first bank. I think you've been the pioneer in a lot of digital services. So I can only imagine had WhatsApp banking or these other video KYC services uh, sort of launched in regular times, you, the marketing channels that you would have used to promote them and talk about them would have been significantly different. So can you just take us through what marketing channels did you lean on the most and how has your marketing mixed mix changed over these launches as compared to the previous ones? So in the last couple of years, we have roughly been giving equal weightages to offline and digital channels, roughly equal weightages. But in the COVID period, what we realized is that uh, some of the offline channels may be getting disrupted because of whatever reasons, because of maybe lack of new programming or whatever. And there was a huge boost that we were also seeing in the digital channels. Uh, we've always been a big believer in digital channels because of our ability to <clears throat> reach out in a targeted manner in a faster manner, we are more fleet-footed there. So I think while we were maybe half half of our efforts would have been on digital and, and offline earlier, but post the COVID, I think we've been like almost entirely only on social media and digital channels. We have been there on all, all the digital channels. We have not left anything because we have always believed that different channels are used for different purposes and we have stuck to that. We've increased our efforts, more than doubled our efforts. And uh, thankfully, we've also been able to connect with our consumers. There's also a small part about how being a service brand, we have always used our digital channels to pick up feedback and resolve queries of customers. I can talk about that later. But that is also one area where that we really um, increased our efforts for, because what we realize is that a lot of people might not be able to come to our, our branches and ask their queries. So they will be on social media. So how do we redouble our efforts and how do we become even quicker in our responses? I can talk about that later. Also. Sure. Shashwat, any difference for you? I'm, I'm sure digital must have been big, but anything new that came into your marketing mix? No, really, I think uh, digital and especially uh, digital led uh, uh, PR and stories and news, I think the consumption patterns have also changed. So I think 
uh, within that uh, news and pr became a very very overweighted call out i would say and that's really worked uh, strongly for us in the last 3 to 4 months i think that's been one smaller pivot um, as an addition but otherwise what you're saying is largely where it has been yeah. sure so moving on from what exactly you did to what guided what you did i think both of you in your own ways spoke about living your brand's purpose right so can you share with us a little bit more about the role of marketing in bringing purpose to the forefront and evolving it into a core philosophy for overall brand positioning shashwat maybe you can take this first yeah sure um so nikita i think uh, see the the way it will brand was always crafted was a, we were a service brand and we have always been about uh, customer service but i think it was never as overtly called out uh in the organization as we we did now and i think uh, we just went back to purpose we said we let's just tighten up we are not going to recraft it because i think it's it's been one of those pieces where uh, you you don't change just because covid hit your brand doesn't change your purpose doesn't change but uh, sometimes you just heighten tighten you accelerate certain parts of the articulation of the purpose a lot more and i think this was the time when we said you know what we we need to have an unfalling belief in the fact that if we serve our customers right uh, they are we have to ensure that they become our fans we keep them for longer we get better business and hopefully their word of mouth will get us more customers in the future as well and i think that ethos had to be re- reset from a largely telecom historically has been a sales led uh, it's an acquisition led business right and i think that that transition has has been the biggest pivot that we have uh, we've been able to make at this point of time as i said the brand and the thos got relaunched internally as well as for customers at different points of time and we first focused on like so just spoke about how i see say bank picked up customer feedback to keep getting better and i think that's the thos we we fought, we thought we was weaker in telecom historically and i think we need, needed to get it right and 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 i think that belief has driven us in the space i also think that as more and more of the organization started taking more efforts to get connected with customers i think the level of empathy went up 100 fold and that's something i i do want to call out because i think the level of challenge on ground the level of problems people have faced in this phase really made us feel we are actually you know what we are a, this is not a phase where you say as a brand i'm transforming india i'm i'm solving all the problems are too large they are too small and too insignificant almost but can we make small efforts to make it easier and better for our customers can we make 5% small small things that can really make a difference to them and i think that's been a game changer for us i think that's what has started moving the whole organization galvanizing the whole organization in the right direction i think that's the piece which potentially i would i would really uh, want to call out from what you done internally sure what about you sujit what was your journey internally of talking about brand purpose and bringing it to the forefront both internally and externally so two things uh, but before i start off i must say uh, shashwat i think fantastic work done by airtel i have been a loyal customer of airtel for many years and i think i love the way you guys reach out to customers and you look at us uh, yeah. thanks uh, f- thank you uh, for up uh, to uh, get back to your question nikita you see very clearly we realize and this is again somewhat similar to what uh, airtel does we internally we always say that we are a support cast we people do not do banking because they want to do banking people are consumers are customers are doing something else and we are just an important tool in that so we realize that we are no more than that our purpose is that how can we be the most efficient tool for you to carry out your purpose which would be you could be buying a home or a car or a, something from an e-com site or blah 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 uh how do we be the most efficient tool and how do we be the most caring and responsive tool so we realize that so all our efforts even otherwise and of course during the pandemic was in saying that you need to go out and do something maybe you want to buy medicines you want to buy groceries you want to pay taxes you want to pay your bills your phones all of that how do i make it the easiest for you so that was our purpose both for our sales channels as well as for our marketing channels how do i make it the most friction free for you point number 1 Point number two, uh, what I was alluding to in, uh, in in my previous question, but I didn't elaborate on it, is that uh, a lot of people will have queries, but they are afraid of coming to the branches, right? Uh, in the initial periods, even now, people are not moving out, but they have queries. They don't know how to resolve it. 
so we said any question that comes in social media how fast can we respond and how satisfactorily we can respond we are proud of the fact that we have always been perhaps the fastest bank to have been able to respond to on social media and i'm saying fastest on the basis of timelines and some of the badges that we get from the large platforms we said we'll not be happy we'll even make that bigger bigger better how can we even respond because a lot of our people are not able to reach out to us in a traditional channels how do we make this channel even better so uh, so as i said we are a support cast people do their work how am i the most caring and most efficient tool in helping them to do their work that's point number 1 Point number two is, uh, can I also be the voice of the customer? I meaning as a team, as a group, as a set of employees, as an entire bank. How can we be also with the, the voice of the consumer back into the, into the bank? How can we say this is what people want? So for example, I'll give you, um, uh, all of us must have heard the Reserve Bank announced this moratorium, an optional moratorium for people who want to postpone their EMIs for a few months. And they announced this in the end of March. And all banks had a limited period of time in which to be able to announce this. Now, announcing is not enough. How do we reach out to people? And there'll be a lot of people. We have millions and millions of customers across some 25 products. People will come back with queries. How do you satisfactorily handle the queries? How do you reduce the stress level? In such situations, actually, stress levels are very high because people, businesses were impacted, jobs were impacted. So how do you handhold them to the best of our abilities and take care of their concerns? So this, these are the things that build the overall trust of the consumers. It's not just one-way marketing that builds. You have to be able to communicate, but at the same time, also get the reverse channel back, listen to what people want, listen to the queries, concerns, bring it back, find a mechanism to resolve. And that's how you build the trust for the brand in the long term. Sure, absolutely. I think both of you end up speaking a lot about being consumer first, meeting consumer expectations. Shashwat, you also mentioned at the starting about listening and how do you how you ensure that your teams were listening into what consumers are thinking. Now, obviously, we've gone through a monumental change in the last few months. So how are you guys tracking these trends and these consumer insights on a daily level, on a, on a weekly level? What long term impacts do you see? COVID-19 having on consumer expectations? And are these long-term impacts that you're probably seeing a trend of already or something that you're expecting in the future? Are, are you reimagining? Are you rethinking your approach for the next six months, keeping that in mind? Yeah. Uh, so, Nikita, I'll go first on this one. So, my own sense is, see, uh, we're not, I can't do crystal gazing uh, in terms of long-term, but I can. what I can definitely vouch for is, look, What's the, what's the situation today? I, I think the customers are, uh, there is a real sense of economic stress that's building up uh, for various reasons. In this case, I think there is uh, clearly a sense of fear uh, across. And, and some of these insights are not different between the poor of this country and the rich of the country. That's a, fun, that's a funny part. Uh, at different levels, the same, these are the same troubles which are in the back of everyone's mind. At different levels, somebody that is survival level, somebody that about thinking, I don't know about my next bonus and my next increment, but but everybody has the same. There is an economic stress there in terms of planning the future. There is a there is a sense of fear uh, that everyone has, and I think the third really big trend that I'm seeing is home is the haven now. So really, everyone needs to invest. People are literally looking at investing inside their homes, right? Uh, because they want to set it up for the for the long term and and really getting it right. So really, I I see these three as things that are here to remain. For some time, I think uh, don't know. Nobody can tell how long, but uh, but I think it's important to realize that these three are the big themes in, at the back of every consumer's mind at different levels. What's the implication for that for our businesses, etc.? That's become the core of how we have pivoted our strategy. Now, for us, it's been a relook at our retail strategy, our footprint, our uh, store operations. Uh, there has been a big relook, as you said, about uh, marketing and the channels and the tonality of how we talk to our customers. Uh, it's also been about uh, it's also been about fast tracking many things that like a lot of digital. One of the things that's happened, like I realized, and I'm sure it's the same for Sujit, is that a lot of digital transformation work that we had already thought of or planned out, but we had thought of it as the next eight quarter plan. Essentially, we have gone ahead and done it in eight weeks because it was because I think. That, that was the need of the hour. And I think, therefore, we, we look at many online adoption, digital adoption for handholding customers to come online, 
making various journeys seamless, really pushing the envelope in terms of making uh, things really simpler. There's a lot of regulation, both in banking as well as in telecom. So working with uh, regulatory authorities to simplify life for everyone. I think this has been a consistent play from all, a lot of the uh, big brands and I've seen it across. So, so I really feel that uh, that's been the big strategic pivot. I don't think we've changed the game completely. I think we're now chasing something else. The strategy has remained the same. I think it has been edited for the context, which are these three themes that I believe are the consumer themes that have changed. And the second piece has been an, a, a sense of acceleration on everything we had thought we had to do in the next two years, being literally done in maybe two quarters. I don't know, Sujit, if uh, this resonates with you as well. Yeah, fully. I think fully resonates. Uh, completely agree with you. Um, so even at our end, uh, what we had thought of that we'll have to do in the next one year or two years, or what we thought of that we'll do it someday, uh, we've been able to do all of them and then launch in the span of maybe one quarter. Uh, that's one number one. And the fact is that consumers are also lapping it up, which means that this was, these were essential. Uh, these, are, these are being welcomed at consumers. Uh, to answer your question, Nikita, I think that uh, while some of the old behaviors will come back, but the advancement of digital that has happened now is here to stay. It was always happening in the last five years, 10 years, it was, space was going up, but the impetus that it has got now, uh, simple thing is you look at UPI transactions, they've shot through the roof on an already high base. Already UPI transactions were perhaps the leading uh, mode of digital payments. And despite being the leading, they have shot up by 2x, 3x in April and May. Uh, I, they, maybe they'll reduce a bit, but I don't see them uh, going back to the old. I mean, we all know, right? All our vegetable vendors, the neighborhood Kirana, the neighborhood medicine shop, everybody is now accepting UPI payments among the last two or three, from the last two or three providers. So, so that is going to stay and that is good. That's good for everybody, good for the economy. That's, that's one. Second is the fact that there is a lot of fear. We all know that. There is a fear of many things, fear of health, uh, fear of near and dear ones. And as Shaspat rightly said, fear of the economic loss. For some, it's not a fear. For some, it's already happened, unfortunately. And for others, I think it's a fear of it might happen to me. There is a fear of the unknown, right? We don't know how long it will last. Uh, if it lasts for a few more months, what's going to be the impact on me and my job and my organization and my brother, sister, wife, everybody. In that fear, what happens is for large brands, for all large service brands, but even more so in banking, is to be able to build trust. Because whenever there is fear and uncertainty, people will be looking at safe havens. It happened in 2008 in a big way. We are seeing a bit of it happening. And it will happen across all service brands. But as I said, maybe a banking, it will happen a bit more because you keep put all your money, your life savings in a bank. So marketeers and the, all employees across all organizations will have to look at how you build the trust, how you maintain the trust. It's very easy to build it, but destroyed in a day, very easy to destroy it in one wrong transaction. How do you maintain the trust? And as I said earlier, there is fear. How do you address the fear? How do you calm down the customer and keep him or her happy and satisfied? So these, I would say digital, and second is how do you continue to build the trust and maintain the trust of your consumer? These two would be my two biggest learnings as well as mantras. Sure, I think advancement of digital is here to say very aptly put, Sujit. And we at LinkedIn no, are no doubt on that. Not complaining at all about it. No doubt. <laughs> so I think both. And of you the beauty is, Nikita. Sorry to cut in. The beauty is, it's a win-win for both. It's win-win yes. for the consumer, win-win for the organization. So, yes. Yes. So. Absolutely. So I think uh, you guys mentioned about acceleration, eight quarters worth of work happening in eight weeks. Maybe it wasn't eight quarters worth of work. It was five, it was six planned yeah. for eight quarters and now happening in eight weeks. So clearly our teams, both your teams have been doing a lot of overtime, have been doing, putting in a lot of effort and making things happen. So if I can ask both of you, and I, th I know I'm putting you at a spot because we didn't discuss talking about this, but if you both of you can share with us one campaign each that you guys are most proud of, you know, that your team has put together in this difficult time. So you want to take that first? <laughs> Nikita has put us in a spot. Okay, I'll, I, I so, can go. Yeah, whichever way. Yeah, please, continue. Yeah. No, I think for us, uh, Nikita, it's been, a, I think the part of acceleration was also doing fewer things. 
so that what we do we do really fast and uh, and and that's where i think this uh, in april when we said look guys we'll do whatever we have to do coming out of the consumer and that's going to be the purpose relaunch i'm really proud of the way this the current open to questions campaign has come come together i think it's been a and and guys what I, all i want to say is that the amount of work done for this campaign externally what you have seen is about the tip of the iceberg i think what it meant in terms of internal changes that we had to make was humongous and and we really kicked off on this uh, we we were already uh, and i think we just accelerated like nobody's business we had to galvanize the full organization it needed product engineering uh, all our call centers we had all our 20 30000 front end employees everyone to be trained uh, reworked rewired inspired uh, for this uh, for this piece to come together but i think this is the one which i i feel it's transformational for it i think it's going to uh, really make a massive difference to people uh, it also came from uh, really going back to the authenticity that i really love about uh, the history of it uh, where they say things the way it is and i think this whole piece of thing we are taking an audacious task we'll never be perfect uh, we'll keep making mistakes our network will keep failing when there's a rain will our towers will still go down but you know what each and every one of the 55 60000 of us uh, between direct employees and all the three pieces of work for atel are only and and i think the definition changed to the t- the, the marketing came up with the definition of saying everyone in atel has two types of job people serve customers and people, and those who serve those who serve customers there are two types of jobs and and therefore everybody has a customer and everybody has to ensure that their customers but that's been the big unlock nikita which is the internal side which is empowering and enabling the people who are serving customers uh, has been the big unlock and uh, and i think this definition that the team and somebody in my team came up saying everybody's job is serving customers or serving those who serve customers and and the moment you define everyone's jobs like that internally it becomes a very very transformational process uh so i think that's been my i would say has been the probably the proudest uh, piece of work we've done in the last three months great so if your team is listening and as in, and is on this call the person who came up with this particular thought i think kudos to you sujit what about you favorite campaign yeah so before i come to the campaign on the thought of serving customers as shashwat said uh, you know few months back our uh, md decided that we will not call our head office as head office it's called the service center Yeah. so we no more call our bkc office which is, which has been there for 20 years we don't call it head office we don't call it corporate office we just call it the bkc service center because the philosophy is either serve the customer or serve the frontline people who are managing the customer so that, uh, so in terms of to answer your question directly uh, while we stepped up the pace of our campaigns and we really um, uh, launched a huge volume of campaigns uh, from the end of march to the second half of march across april and may So while we would have done some 40 50 60 campaigns but i one or two that i would really like to talk about are uh, one is uh, you see a lot of people know icci as a 15 20 year old modern bank but we actually were formed in 1955 as one of india's premier uh, project finance institutions and we were formed by the world bank and government of india so we have a rich legacy of financing a lot of things in the economy which people are not aware of So we started a simple step about did you know this about us about how we financed some of the first two wheeler plants in the country and how we were the first to finance the retail two wheelers for retail loans also how we established some of the early institutions in the country and how we are helping the retail business now uh, so that's a trust sort of a camp, trust building campaign that we did and we put minimal investments into it but we were astounded with the amount of love and feedback that we got on that campaign so it's a series we have done five of them and more to follow so that was one the second was completely different but a bit of spreading the warm uh, somebody gave us a beautiful idea on fathers day about how uh, fathers uh, interact with the kids and what can be done during the lockdown so there's a sort of a riddle and a quiz that is being played across different families we use we did not use actors but we used regular people for it and it was shot in a regular manner absolutely astounding reaction so it's a very small campaign but the learning for us is that uh, in these times i think something that is fun and something that brings you closer to your loved ones people appreciate that and it really gave us very good results so two of these disparate campaigns but as i said we've been uh, doing a whole series on pushing on digital channels and they've been going going well for us but 
in terms of thoda hatke campaigns these are the two that work here sure i i personally love your hashtag hashtag banking on you i think it is extremely yeah. extremely intuitive great so i think uh, we have we are about 20 minutes in but before we move on to the audience questions which by the way are blowing up my chat and you know comments window i have just one last question for you guys um you know given your experience over the last few months and the fact you must be talking to senior marketing leaders your peers in the industry do you think the pandemic is going to create or probably has already created any pivots for the marketing function overall i would say uh, if i can start off i would say that marketing has always been important it will continue to be important and its importance is decided in every organization by how close you are to the consumer and how effective you are a voice of the consumer inside the organization if you're only a one way channel you will have a limited effect if you're a two way channel where you're able to communicate but with equal gusto and enthusiasm you're able to get back from outside and input back so that the organization can evolve and transform you will always be relevant and i think teams that have been doing it well would have done well now so i see the importance has been the same as earlier it is just that which team responds to situations and emergencies in which way yeah sure now i think uh, sujit uh, put it very nicely i think uh, the it's a two way it's a function that maintains the two way channel together and and i think also puts the context of uh, business being driven by the customer to be channel at this at the heart i think it's a for me marketing is always the amalgamation of customer uh, listening to customers talking to customers and figuring out therefore what's best for the business and and becoming the guiding light now i think in the, in all of this uh, whenever there's change and uncertainty in there i feel the value of this actually goes up so uh, and and that's what we have seen for example for etel in the last three four months i have personally seen that very very strongly uh i also think that there will be a need for marketing to become lot more digital lot more agile as we go along because i think uh, uh we we've all been i think marketing strategies used to be very very long term strategies i'm seeing them becoming shorter and shorter as we go along and i'm sure this this trend is going to accelerate so i think more ag- agility in marketing uh, and the agility has to come from the source of authority of the fact that you know what's best for the consumer and what's best for the business that's the role i think marketing is going to play in organization going forward so i think that's that's where i i see this uh, function evolve great i think some really interesting points there and i hope the audience i know the audience is enjoying but because there are a lot of comments and questions so i'm going to lean on shiny to share with me the questions that we would like to ask you and if they're for you specific i'll mention otherwise please either of you feel free to take the question i think the first question comes from somya agarwal and she asks or he i'm not sure so i could be wrong uh, do you think physical banking or customer service will get gradually fade away or become less visible in india due to the growth in digital eco- ecosystem over a period of time so i think they're talking about physical airtel centers and physical banks do you think there is scope that they will gradually fade away i don't think they'll fade away uh, i think the digital transformation pace has picked up more and it will continue to accelerate <clears throat> but india is a country of a huge number of consumers for number 1 for number 2 india is a country which is a very diverse set of customers i mean if i look at a youth in a bombay or a delhi versus a person in the middle ages versus a senior citizen versus people in the smaller towns versus people in the rural areas so very diverse set of products preferences habits and capabilities so i feel in the foreseeable future i see physical channels remaining surviving maybe the role will change what in banking we have say for the last few quarters few years is that uh, they will not be used for regular transactions you will not go to a branch and say here pay my tax or pay this bill you will more and more people will do that on the phone but maybe you will go there for a more evolved transaction some investment advice or for the purchase of a large uh, asset like a house or a car the purpose could change but i don't see them going away but yes definitely more and more consumers will shift to digital channels no doubt on that but i don't see physical channels fading away or being stopped in the foreseeable future and that won't happen sure i think the i think the world will uh, slowly and forget the world i think india will move towards uh, higher convenience for users i think that's what will happen that's what will lead to online adoption for 
basic transactions. That, that's going to happen. That I think is here and that's going to accelerate. The challenge is, uh, despite everything, it's not that most customers for everything feel that a digital transaction is the best transaction. So there are many cases and many uses for which people want a human touch. People want a person to talk to. Uh, people want, and I'm sure in Sujit's business, it's even more pronounced than my business, where people want to talk. They, it's not okay. It's not, people want to wait for the IVR, by the way, for the call center guy to pick up after seven minutes of holding, rather than dropping a one-line message on an app to say, I have this problem, solve it for me. And that's the reality. It's the same, we ask the same customers. Uh, why did you wait for seven minutes of holding time before coming into the call center? You could have just done this here. And they say, no, it's okay. I wanted to talk to someone. And I've heard this so many times. They just the reassurance of a human telling them, okay, sir, this has been noted. We have picked up the service request. Somebody will call you. So there are various needs. And I think it's, it's absolutely, as Sujit said, I don't think this is going to disappear. I think we are moving more and more towards a uh, omni world. Uh, everyone uses this word. Uh, we, st we have started using a journey word called Safa, which is essentially start anywhere and finish anywhere. Ah. So if people, you, they want convenience. They should be able to start their journey anywhere they want, offline, online, here, there, and should be, and everything should be a seamless transition. If they are in transaction with Airtel, whether they're talking to my front end network guy on the street, to uh, a call center guy, to uh, my app, to my website, they could, they, the expectation is that the customer should, should know, we should know exactly who the customer is, what their problems is, et cetera. And I think that's the world we are moving towards in India. And that's why there will be the richness of making everything online, offline seamless is the way forward in my view. But I don't think offline will go away. People will, of course, there will be a reticence to step out if they can manage without it, uh, given all the scenario that is. And that's why the online adoption, that's why for basic transactions, people will move very uh, simple money transfer, simple payment, bill payments, um, telecom recharges, we will just move online. There is, that's not going to happen. But uh, if they have a query, will they just go on app on self-help and resolve everything and come back? I don't see that happening. <laughs> <laughs> Anything that's out of the ordinary, people want a human touch. True, human to human interaction is very important. This is a very interesting question. And I think even this is something I, as a marketer, have faced as well in the last few months. And I know Shiny, Chandni, everybody on the call from AdTech team will agree. How difficult or erratic are the digital footprints of customers during you know, COVID-19? Are there elements of uncertainty or surprise among customer behavior that has derailed your set strategies or led to a certain campaign or an idea not working? So you're saying things that we have uh, junked in our, our Yes, I think, yes, I think they're trying to say that we decided, we figured consumers are probably going, using a lot more X platform. So we decided to do a campaign specifically up for a particular platform. And the particular day we launched, they decided to not show up on that platform. And that is something even the webinar world is facing, right? The registration, this is, we were just discussing just before we started this, the registrations are significantly increasing and the attendance rate is obviously decreasing. You decide to do a webinar series and then you don't see the success that you were wanting to see. So has something like that happened with either of you in, in, in either of your cases where you started something, junked it within these eight to 12 weeks? Many, I'll not talk about all of them uh, because for every success we try, I think there are at least two failures behind them. So I think uh, okay. I, I'll be honest about this and especially in the in this phase, uh, we went overboard in terms of saying, let's, let's try various things. Uh, we try a lot of stuff about, uh, we wanted to pivot our retail shops to, uh, to deliver on the curb or out of retail store service. Uh, consumers did not respond to it. Uh, uh, they, were, they were very, very unhappy about it. We tried to, uh, we tried various things on insurance, for example, with telecom, we thought this will take off. Consumers did not invest more. Uh, there, uh, so there were various assumptions we made. Many, many tried. We we tried when we had the initial shutdown. There was a problem where customers didn't know how to recharge because only uh, half of them were online recharges, half were offline recharge, and everything was shut. Uh, we we must have tried about twelve innovations uh, to to get them to recharge, and I'm saying three of them stuck, which is perfectly fine. We opened three new channels of recharge, which have become significant, but nine of them had to shut. After that, so I think that's a that's an that's the part of 
uh, when you try to do things in the agile and fast way, uh, things will work, things won't. And I think it's perfectly okay. The important thing is to shut down things fast. The, the key to success in this agile way of working is to shut down things very fast when something's not working. Anyway, so, Sujit, uh, I, I, that's, that's my answer. But uh, Sujit, anything else you have, uh, I'm very happy to hear. Yeah, so uh, in our bank, our philosophy for the last few years has been that <clears throat> we will make all our services available on all channels. So be it the branch, be it the ATM, be it the phone banking, or be it now our largest channel, digital. What we have seen is that different consumer profiles choose different channels for different products. So, uh, so, so you have to keep in mind that in banking, you can have something as simple as paying a bill or a recharge or something like that to a very large uh, thing, which I said a few minutes back, like buying a house or buying a car or buying a washing machine through a, through, through a digital source. So uh, what we have realized is that there is no point trying to uh, influence or mandate saying use only this channel. We will make our channels available. And uh, for all products, almost all products will be available across almost all channels. Consumers in different regions behave differently and they will adopt it. And we are fine with that. We want to be like a supermarket offering the entire choice. Uh, people pick up what they want. And uh, only thing is the digital acceleration, more campaigns, more products, more services being offered on digital more seamlessly. So like, for example, earlier, uh, as an example, three or four years back, uh, you could come and open a savings account in our bank uh, completely online through e Aadhaar. But there were limitations in it in the sense that because of various regulations, you could use the savings account only up to a limited amount of money. That's the same for wallets, for telecom companies and banks and everything. What we now said is, can we make it even better through with a video KYC, can you open a full-fledged account? So this is an example of a digital transformation. You can still go to the branch and open an account. You can still do it here. Consumers have both the choices, but we will continue to make more products available at a faster pace in a more seamless manner on digital, but we'll not force anybody. We'll keep it as a supermarket. People can decide. Sure. So just next question is for you. I think this is regards to the first few questions that you answered. Uh, do you think you'll go back to the 50-50 marketing split between offline and social media once the pandemic flattens, say, next year? Or do you anticipate you'll continue to focus on uh, social media more? So you see, uh, social media and digital, uh, if you see the journey, the curve has been like this in the last five, six years for most marketeers. Um, will the curve flatten? No, I don't think so. The curve will continue to be an upwardly moving curve. Having said that, will it be 100 and zero as we've seen in the last quarter? No, it will come back to some normal. I see it coming back to some normal, point number one. Um, digital will play an even higher role in the coming quarters than it, what it has played till last year. But it might not be 100, zero, point number one. Point number two, I think as marketeers, one mantra we should always remember, uh, be led by data and be where your consumer is. Don't go by fables don't go by your own uh, prejudices your own biases there is a lot of data around and a good marketeer has to look at multiple data sources all of them may not be congruent but it's our ability to be able to make sense out of incongruent data sources and then take the right decision don't go for individual biases and prejudices that would be my mantra. true and and shashwat i saw you smiling when he mentioned data driven decisions and marketing campaigns. So we have a question from Sandeep Vadva, and I think you can take this up. Are there any examples of campaigns where automation such as AI ML or other data driven an analytics was used successfully in your organization? I think uh, AI is usually uh, over claimed by most marketers. So I think, uh, but I would, I would say in the space of machine learning and data science, uh, I think lots uh, we've, uh, See, our, our biggest source of growth actually is zone based because when you have 300, 320 million odd customers directly interacting with you. Uh, I think we, we started this process about two and a half years back, which we call as customer 360, which is really being able to profile and, and map every single customer for us. I think, I believe we've got about 60% of our base now very accurately mapped. It's, it's just getting better with every month and quarter. So, 
So I think a lot of our marketing now on various initiatives, because what happens is everyone comes to Airtel as a, as a basic data or broadband service, but then there is a whole plethora of services that then get uh, built on top of it. And that's how we look at it. So now even, uh, and, and that all of that gets driven by very, and customer 360 is the machine learning process essentially. So it's, that's the ML in play. You really, with every campaign, every message, every reaction that's, uh, eliciting a response or not eliciting a response gets noticed and people get start getting tagged in a particular profile. That, so that's the ML part of it. And then we keep running various data science experiments to try taking up ROI on every, every single uh, message and campaign that we try and drive. And I must say on the, on the premium customer end, which is essentially the data users, I think we've gotten to a level, which I think is the last two, two and a half years has been a phenomenal progress. I think still some, uh, I would say a few challenges on the feature phones the user side because the number of data points and the richness of data is very limited. But I think on the smartphone side, uh, the data uh, usage led by ML and then a lot of marketing uh, data science built into the marketing plans uh, is the way of life now uh, in which we are going. So for example, today, content, uh, video consumption, gaming consumption, uh, people with uh, online banking transactions, credit card transactions, each kind of these can be, are profilable and, and targeted differently and, and built differently. And, and this base keeps getting sharper and sharper as we go along. So, so I think that's, that's a way of life that we've built now. Sure. So I think we just have about four minutes. So maybe we'll take one last question before we hand it back to Shiny to wrap up. Uh, this question is from Bhavna Kupa who talks about, do you think leadership should change or has changed already given the times. Maybe, you know, you could throw light on how you spoke to your C-suite, your leadership uh, around being present on various channels. So, Jit? Jit, why don't you take that one? And I'll so, buy <laughs> Feel free, feel free. <laughs> um, uh, I think uh, leadership if the leadership has to change, I think it's going to be a sad scene. Leadership has to be adaptable. Leadership has to be able to see sure. the change outside, the change in the consumer's lives, and be able to adapt. That, I think, would be a better word. Uh, leadership changing to me means like it's a leadership that's cast in stone and you can't adapt it. So I would use the word adaptability, extremely important. And uh, as I said some time back, uh, uh, functional leaders will have to be able to own up their part of the uh, responsibility of the value chain. In this case, as marketeers, you have to own up the responsibility of being the voice of the customer, come back yeah. and say what is required and ensure that the organization gives solutions to be able to resolve the customer, to be able to give a solution to solve something for the customer, solve a pain point or delight the customer somewhere else. So for example, as I said, we able to open an account or launch a WhatsApp banking where it's the most convenient way to be able to resolve your concerns or do a campaign where you can go and say that, look, you knew 50 services on my mobile app, but here are 10 other services for which people come to the branch frequently. Just see the simple video of how to do, and you could do these 10 things sitting at home. So it could be a combination of some or all of this, but no, I don't see them changing. I see them adapting, rising to the occasion and resolving the needs of the customer in a better, faster, more efficient manner. Yeah. I think not remaining, fixated uh, on, on a style of leadership is the, is the crux. And I think the COVID situation has taught all of us this. I think everyone, each and every one of us at different places have changed the way we used to lead our teams, the way, the kind of activities we would engage in. And I think it's this learning agility, managing change. I think change is going to be the only constant now, even more than ever before. And I think leadership's adaptability will become a key differentiator for success. So I think that's the basic change I think that's needed. Otherwise the tenets of leadership won't change. I'll just add one sentence to what Shashwat said. Um, I've been coming around to the view of late that, you know, the, the earlier Unilever chairman along with Harvard came out with this term called VUCA, volatile, uncertain, chaotic. Harish. Between the, uh, no, no, I think Paul. Paul. Okay. Paul came. Uh, so we've all been hearing about this term for the past five, six years. Last one year or so, I've been sort of thinking of it that VUCA is not a phenomenon. I think VUCA is the way the world will be. 
don't ask me don't challenge me on this i don't have theories around it i am only following the vuka the, the literature around it but i'm saying more and more vuka stuff is happening around us a lot of it as we see in the last 3 months on the health front and the geopolitical front a lot of it would not have been predicted by the best of experts 6 months back but these have impacted our life and changed our life in some ways that we could never imagine so vuka is no more a phenomenon vuka is a part of my life is the way i'm seeing it and what does how does it impact me it impacts my professional life and my personal life i think that i have to plan for every quarter i don't think we can make a two year plan for both on my personal life family life as well as my work life make every quarter and be extremely agile you should be able to change the rudder of your ship in a very fast manner depending on the signals outside vuka is a way of life now for us absolutely i think that's a great note to end the session at and in fact bhavna conquers sujit she says adapt is the word so clearly we answered her question well thank, thank you. you shashwat and sujit for being an amazing two panelists um this was my first time moderating and you couldn't have been nicer to me so thank you so much for that i think there was some tremendous nuggets of wisdom tons of learning for me i think i had till now heard about servant leadership for you know our leaders and i think i heard i looked at your brands both icici bank and airtel coming across as service leaders in their respective uh, you know sectors and maybe some thing like this exists i'll probably have to read up on it but that's what came across to me it just felt like you're talking about how service leadership can be looked upon from the brand point of view so i think great job i am an icici bank and an airtel customer and i'm very happy to hear uh, you know what goes behind bringing to us what you bring to us i hope it was as exciting for you as well there was some learning from each other and some from the questions from our audience as well thank you so much anything that you would like to say on an ending note thanks a lot nikita thanks a lot shiny it's been a wonderful session for us it's also been a wonderful learning from your personal level and some of the questions that we got from the audience were interesting uh, it makes you think which is the fun part of being in a webinar some few things you bring to the webinar and a few things you take away from the webinar So overall it's been a fun part and great interacting with you shashwat it's been nice to know you and interact with you uh same here sujit uh, i think uh, this has been a great experience uh, nikita thank you so much for having us over i think uh, it's been uh, one it's been a privilege to talk about uh, the last 3 4 months but i think equally as, as sujit said uh, i think just hearing the questions the conversations also hearing about another great brand like icic what they are doing and how they are going about it it opens our minds as well so i think it's, it's been a pleasure thank you thanks thanks shashwat thank thanks sujit over to you thank shiny you. thank you so much nikita sujit and shashwat for bringing to us these great insights and out of box ideas i'm sure a thank lot you. of us uh, will gain an inspiration from this it, it was great interacting with all of you thank you so much thank you and so much thank you before thank we you wrap up uh, sorry Um, no, that, that, yeah, I was just saying thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Before we wrap up, I want to give a big shout out to our partner, LinkedIn Marketing Solutions, for bringing making this series a success. Thank you, Nikita, and thank you, LinkedIn. Uh, thank you, LinkedIn. The, thank you, Nikita. Uh, for the audience, thank you so much for being such a wonderful audience. Please do fill out a thirty second feedback form that you will see in the chat box right now. and also when you exit this webinar thank you once again and have a great day ahead all the best to everybody stay safe thank you